Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a tricky one, finding the KTH smallest number in lexicographical order. It sounds simple, but there's a really clever twist. We'll break it down step by step. Alright, so here's the task. We're given two numbers, n and kn. We need to imagine all the numbers from 1 up to nan, and then sort them as if they were words. This is called lexicographical order. Our job is to find the number that ends up in the k deja th position of that sorted list. The catch? n can be huge, up to 10 to the power of 9, so we can't actually create and sort this list. Let's look at a simple example to see what lexicographical order really means. If our upper limit n is 13, the numbers aren't sorted in the usual way. It's like sorting words in a dictionary. So, 1 comes first, then, anything starting with 1 comes next. So 10, 11, 12, and 13 follow. Only after we've exhausted all the numbers, starting with 1, do we move on to 2? So in this weird ordering, the second number is actually 10. This is the core puzzle we need to solve. So what's the first idea that comes to mind? Well, the most straightforward approach would be to just do it. We could create a list of all numbers from 1 to n, sort them like words, and then pick out the one at position k fide. But the problem is, n can be a billion. A list with a billion numbers is just too massive for any computer to handle. This brute force method is a dead end we need a much smarter approach. Instead of a flat list, let's think about the numbers as a tree. At the very top, we have nodes for 1 through 9. Under the 1 node, we have its children. 10, 11, 12, and so on. Under the 10 node, we'd have 100, 101. You get the idea. This structure is called a prefix tree, and it perfectly matches the lexicographical order. If we walk this tree from top to bottom, and from left to right at each level, we get the exact sorted sequence we need. So our problem now is just navigating this tree to find the KC's Amquai Servugen. We can think of ourselves as standing on a number. Let's call it our current number. From here we have two basic moves. We can either move down to its first child, like from 1 down to 10, or we can move across to its next sibling, like from 1 across to 2. The question is, how do we know which move to make to find our target? The decision comes down to one critical question, how many numbers are in the group that starts with my current number? Let's say we're at number 1 and we're looking for the 7th number. If we calculate that there are, say, 5 numbers that start with 1, then the 7th number can't possibly be in this group. So we can skip all 5 of them in one go, and move across to the next number which is 2. We'd then subtract the 5 we skipped from k, and continue our search from there. So how do we calculate that count? Let's call it calculating the gap. Imagine our limit n is 100 and we want to count all numbers that start with the prefix 1. We can do this level by level. At the first level, between 1 and its sibling 2, we just have the number 1 itself. That's one number. At the next level, we look at numbers from 10 up to 20. All 10 of those, from 10 to 19, are less than or equal to our limit of 100. So we add 10 more. At the third level, we look from 100 up to 200. Only 100 itself is valid, so we add 1. In total, there are 12 numbers that start with the prefix 1. Okay, here is the complete Python code that puts this all together. I know it might seem a bit dense at first, but don't worry. We're about to walk through the main parts piece by piece, so it'll make perfect sense. This is the heart of our algorithm. We start our current number at 1. And since we've already found the first number, we subtract 1 from Kprin. Now, our loop continues as long as we still have steps to take. Inside, we first calculate how many nodes are in the current group, if the number of steps we need to take, k, is bigger than that count, we just skip the whole group. We do this by subtracting the count from k, and moving our current number to its sibling, which is just the current number plus 1. Otherwise, if the target is inside this group, we move down. We use up one step to do that, so we subtract 1 from k prime, and our new current number becomes its first child, which we find by multiplying by 10. This is our helper function for counting the gap. It takes two numbers which represent the start of the current prefix group and the start of the next one. It loops as long as the start of the group is within our limit, not below. In each step of the loop, it calculates how many valid numbers are in the current level. It's the smaller of either n plus 1 or the start of the next group, minus the start of the current group. We add this count to our total. Then, we move to the next level down by multiplying both boundary numbers by 10. Finally, it returns the total count. So how much better is this new approach? It's incredibly fast. 
The time it takes is roughly the logarithm of n times the logarithm of n. This is because our main loop basically travels down the tree, and the depth of the tree is related to the number of digits in n, which is log n. And for each step our helper function also does a log n calculation. The best part is the memory usage. We're only using a handful of variables to keep track of our position. We call this big O of 1, or constant space, which is fantastic. So to wrap up, what did we learn? First, that the brute force approach of generating and sorting is almost never the answer for large numbers. The big aha moment was reframing the problem. Not as a list, but as a prefix tree. By cleverly navigating this tree and calculating how many nodes are in each branch before we explore it, we can jump across vast sections of the search space. This lets us find the answer in a tiny fraction of the time. I hope that explanation was clear and helpful. If it was, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Feel free to subscribe for more deep dives like this, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.